Hey readers, today I want to remind you that you can think about the main idea as you read. One way readers do this is by stopping and jotting about the details in the text to think about the main idea. This is important because it helps us understand the information in the text. Now, as we're reading today, you may hear my dog bark at me because he's mad at me because it's time for his walk. So we're just going to ignore that if you hear that, Vela in the background. All right, let's take a closer look at the anchor chart for today. Today in our strategy, we are going to focus on when we stop, think, and jot. But sometimes as a reader, it's hard to know when do we actually stop and jot while we're reading. So we're going to use this anchor chart to help us. Today, while we're reading, we are going to stop, think, and jot when we learn new information that makes us think about what we learned. We have a burst of curiosity when we read something and we're really wondering about it as readers. Why someone did something, how come. And finally, we are also going to stop, think, and jot when we come to the end of a section because we really need to think about what is this part mostly about? What does the author want me to know and learn as a reader? So today you're going to watch me as I read this text and show you how I am going to stop and jot to think about the main idea of the text. Now the title of this text is Events Leading Up to the Civil War. I can tell by the title that this text is going to be about the actions or events that led up to the start of the Civil War between the Northern and Southern states. Now I'm going to read this paragraph and use my stop, think, and jot strategy to help me think about what this text is mostly about. Now I'm going to start reading. People moved west and new territories formed. Territories were areas of land outside the borders of the United States. After enough people moved to an area, it become a state. Huh. Hmm. That's interesting. Readers, I'm going to stop right here because I noticed that I'm interested in what the author just told me. I have, a little, my, I have a little curiosity about this, and I did learn something new too. I'm interested that the land out west was not a part of the United States. And I think it's pretty interesting that this land could become a state if more people move there. I'm going to stop and jot this because this is a new learning for me, and it also was I was curious for me too. So I'm going to stop and jot this on my sticky note. I jotted, I learned that territories can become states when people move there. Let's keep reading to find more about what happened to these territories or new states. Let me find where I was. Oh yes. When a state joined the union, it sent men to Congress. These men represented the state. The people in Missouri wanted to form a new state. Missouri could enter the Union in one of two ways. It could be a slave state or a free state. A free state did not let people have slaves. Now, readers, I think this is something very important. So I'm going to stop right here and start thinking about what the author just told me. So the author is saying that when new states want to join the want to join the United States, they send people to Congress. And I'm thinking that when they go to Congress, these men represent the state and what they represent what the state wants. The author also pointed out that these men or the state could say if they wanted to be a free or a slave state. So I'm thinking that when those men from Missouri went to Congress, they went to say to Congress whether they wanted to be a free or a slave state. This is new information to me as a reader, and I think it's important information, especially for the causes of the Civil War. So I'm going to stop and jot right here. My jot is, this made me think that states can vote to be a free or a slave state. Now 
Now I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to start my next paragraph and keep reading, keeping in mind that I'm going to stop and jot when I find something interesting, when I learn new information, or I'm at the end of a section. Let's keep reading. The people in the South did not want those in the North to have more power in Congress. The Northerners did not want slavery to spread. Mm, so we got some opposing sides here. So in 1820, Henry Clay made a plan. It was called the Missouri Compromise. Hmm. I'm really interested in this as a reader, the Missouri Compromise. As a reader, I'm instantly thinking that how did the Missouri Compromise, what Henry, this plan that Henry Clay made, how did it impact all the states? Since I'm thinking, I'm really wondering about this as a reader, I'm going to stop and jot my question. So my question is, how did the Missouri Compromise impact the U.S.? So I'm going to keep reading with this question in mind. With it, Missouri joined the Union as a slave state. The land that is now Maine split from Massachusetts. Maine was a free state. All the states above Missouri's southern border would be free states, and all the states below the border would be slave states. Hmm. So it seems that this compromise really decided which states would be free states and which states would be slave states. And I think it's really interesting how this Missouri compromise really kind of split the United States. So now that I've finished this section, I need to really stop and think about what this is mostly about, this last jot right here. When I come to the end, what is this part mostly about? So I'm gonna use my stop and jots that I have so far to help me think about the main idea or what this whole section was mostly about. What did the author want me to know as a reader? So I'm gonna look over my jots. Well, so my first jot was about how territories can become states, so there's a bunch of new land coming in, and these you know states could be a free or a slave state. And then my last jot was a question about the Missouri Compromise, about what that, how that impacted the United States. So if I'm thinking about how, how all these pieces of information fit together, new territories were growing the size of the United States. And because of this, some people didn't want the power in Congress to be different. So I'm thinking that this section or this part is mostly about how when the new territories started to come in, or the new states, the U.S. tried to balance power between the free and the slave states with the Missouri Compromise. I'm going to add a final jot to this to really show my thinking as a reader. So this section is mostly about how the U.S. was trying to balance the number of free states and slave states with the Missouri Compromise. Readers, did you see how I stop, think, and jot throughout the text? And even how I used my jots to help me think about what is this text mostly about? What is this section mostly about? This helped me understand what does the author want me to know as a reader to really understand what's happening? Well, now it's your turn. In step two, you are going to continue reading this text. You are going to read about the Fugitive Slave Act and Dred Scott. So as you are reading, make sure that you are stopping, thinking, and jotting. Be sure that you stop, think, and jot when you learn new information, you have a burst of curiosity and have a question, and even come to the end of a section. You will need these stop and jots for your discussion post today. All right, readers, we are so excited to hear about your stop and jots and what you think about this, what this section is mostly about. Bye, readers.